disturb my slumber. Well, you always call us puny mortals, right? That I do, puny mortal. And I was wondering, how does that work? Well, on the end of everyone's genes, there are these things called telomeres that get shorter with age until the obfuscation reaches the actual DNA, causing aging. Mine shorten according to Hofstetter's Law, which states that things take longer than you expect, even when you take into account Hofstetter's Law. So mine never actually gets shorter, puny mortal. Hmm. Can you grant me that power? Can I? Physically, yeah, I can. Then great and powerful obfuscate, I humbly request as your loyal follower. Oh, you want me to make you immortal? Hey. No, while I can grant immortality, I choose not to. And while you're at it, stop groveling. I hate that behavior. Did you know that Alan Turing, in addition to inventing the Turing machine and cracking Enigma and buying a bunch of silver and losing it, also wrote the first chess engine? Around the turn of the 1950s, Claude Shannon published a paper saying that computers would probably at some point know how to play chess and Turing devised TuroChamp. And although it was never implemented on actual hardware and was tested by running it manually, that sounds painful, it paved the way for other chess engines. Or, as Wikipedia put it in very encyclopedic terms, Turing and Shannon had laid the foundation of greatness. Citation needed. TuroChamp is also very bad. It didn't take me that many tries to beat a recreation of it using the grab opening. This may have to do with the fact that it was from the 1940s, but at that time, it was estimated that it would take about another 10 years or so for chess computers to beat humans. In 1979, which is way past 1959, the estimation had fallen to 10 years for a chess computer to beat a human. You may have noticed that it had not changed at all. Douglas Hofstetter noticed this, and coined the term Hofstetter's Law, which states that it always takes longer than you expect, even when you take into account Hofstetter's Law. Hmm, that's self-referential. That implies that a chess computer will always be 10 years out, when in real life it's negative 27 years out. Well, Carl, that just sounds like a you problem. Anyway, Hofstetter is an esoteric programming language that was inspired by Hofstetter's Law and developed by Austin Henley. The language is notable in the fact that it is an esolang that supports regex, reading and writing from files, and HTTP requests. It also follows a somewhat bizarre execution order and is generally unwieldy and unpleasant to use. That's what makes it an esolang. So the first thing you'll notice if you start programming in Hofstetter is the fact that all data is required to come from an outside source of some kind. So to write the Hello World program, there needs to be an external file to get this data from. Luckily, we can load in an external file by putting the file's name into the source code. This external file, for no real reason, is Stephanie Meyer's Twilight. Because that was literally the first thing that popped into my mind when asked to name a book. Don't know what that says about me, but it probably says something. Even though Twilight is a book that I never intend to read, and actually intend never to read. But the whole book's text is loaded into this Hofstetter program now. Um, neat. So, where's that text stored? Oh, it's stored in line one. But, so line one is now the entire text of Twilight? And it's self-modifying? No, it's not on the line. It's in the line. You see, each line in Hofstetter also stores one string of data as a variable, and instead of variable name as being a thing, you just refer to the data by its corresponding line of code. Line 0, which doesn't really exist, will always contain the empty string, even if you set something to it. Loading and storing data from another source, or doing a regex, modifies the data inside of the line that the instruction is on, so it actually does matter what line instructions occur on. Each line in Hofstetter contains a sequence of commands, and they are run in round-robin style. So it runs the first command on line 1, the first command on line 2, until it has run a command on every line. Then it goes to the next command, so it goes to the second command on line 1, the second command on line 2, and so on. 
Each line has its own command pointer though, so it may run the first command on line 1, then the third or fourth command on line 2, depending on how the program has progressed. This can get really complicated if you're not being careful. Luckily, the Hello World program doesn't have to deal with that. It loads Twilight into two line variables, line 1 and line 2. Next, a regex selects the word hello out of line 1 and the word world out of line 2. So now line 1 contains hello and line 2 contains world. Yes, with the space in front of it. Anyway, line 2 is done, so it runs out of commands. Line 1, however, still has commands to do. This one, plus 2, will concatenate line 2's data after line 1's data. So line 1 now contains hello world and we can print it out using the octothorpe command, which does input-output. Wait a second! This seems overly complicated and dumb! Why the heck are you using twilight as the source text, you stale cheese it Just use the phrase hello world in the input file and make it shorter! Oh, thanks for that. But does that version demonstrate concatenation and regex? Yes, you buffoon! Yeah, shut up. Well, there's no concatenation in that one, so I don't care. Anyway, time to move to a more complicated problem. More complicated problem? Why are you talking like this? And why am I talking like this now? Oh no! Someone must have turned on the Uwafayo, which changes the went to L and the went to O into W, which sounds like absolute garbage. Dude, shut up. This joke is really dumb. And if you don't stop, I'll break your legs. With a spatula. So this program converts all the L's and R's into W's, causing any text you write to instantly become nauseating. We start by loading in the letter W from probably the silliest looking external file ever created, and then remove the new line that refuses to go away using regex. Meanwhile, we load in data from the standard input console as the text to uwuify. Hang on, I thought that that sign was used to output text, but you're using it here to input text. How does that work? Well, in Hofstetter, several of the commands behave differently depending if the data held by a line is an empty string or not. If the line's data is an empty string, the octothorpe sign is an input command, otherwise it's an output command. Moving on, the way this program works is by splitting the string to the last L or R using regex, then in the result string, adding to the start w, followed by the text that we split, until we have processed the entire string. The final split does not have a w added to the start because it's the beginning of the string. Implementation-wise, this program makes frequent use of the swap command, which is represented by an at sign and swaps a line's data with another line's data. Since line 0 always contains the empty string, swapping with 0 basically works as a clear command. Similarly, if you swap a line's data with itself, that's basically a no-op. This is useful when one line is storing data and it's waiting for its turn. At the end of each of these lines, there is a conditional statement. In Hofstetter, there are two kinds of conditional statement, equal and not equal. Both conditions work the same way. If the condition is true, nothing happens and the program just moves on to the next instruction. If the condition is false, however, that line, and only that line, has its execution pointer reset to the beginning while keeping the data inside of that line exactly the same. This is how we get that situation mentioned earlier, where lines are running commands in different positions at the same time. Conditionals are used in the Uwafier program to have it loop through the entire string until it's all processed. Also, one unforeseen unfortunate consequence of this is that if a string starts with an L or R, then it won't be converted to a W. So don't start strings with those letters. It works fine on all other strings though, so if you must start with an L or R, put a space at the beginning. So uh, didn't you say this language could do HTTP requests? What could you make with those? Well, I thought it would be fun to try making the front end to a social networking site using an SLang. This web service will connect to a server where you can post and read short messages. This concept has definitely, totally never been done before, and because the name seems to miraculously be available, I'm calling this totally unique website idea Twitter. 
and if X wants to sue me, this is parody. So this site will have a front-end written in Hofstetter and a back-end written in PHP. The back-end is pretty simple. It adds a message to the page if it receives a post request, and it sends the previously written messages back if it gets a GET request. It's like 50 lines. Now moving on to the front-end, because that's actually what you're here for. For site content that is static, such as a message requesting a username or requesting a message to send, the program actually only uses one constants file, and it selects the message out of that constants file using a regex similar to the Hello World Out of Twilight program. The first thing it does is ask the user to sign in with a username, which gets attached to the beginning of all of the posts. Next, we do the first request to a server. An HTTP request is represented in Hofstetter by just putting the URL of the server. If there's data in the line already, a post request is performed using that line's data as the request, and the response is stored into the line. If there's no data in that line, a GET request is performed and the response is stored into that line. Here, since the line's data is an empty string, it performs a GET request, stores the data in the line, and prints it out. After that, the program enters the part where the user is able to post messages. The program enters a loop where it reads a message onto line 13, and then concatenates the username and the message before doing a post request, which is handled by the server. The program then goes into an infinite loop letting you post forever. There will be no mistake. But yeah, that's a basic Twitter-style social media front-end written in Hofstetter. Calling it Twitter is doing some really heavy lifting, but they're kinda similar. Also, I was totally not expecting the name to become available while making this video. Hey everyone, how's it going? Eh, pretty good. How about you? I'm doing fantastic. OMG, did you see Insert Celebrity Here's new outfit? So last year, Octothorpe passed their prime. The Earth is flat! Wake up, sheeple! Um, actually, community notes say that the Earth is not flat. See, if you look at the distance between Sydney and Perth... Dude, he's so far gone. You're not gonna convince him. You're all brainwashed! You're... The internet was a mistake. Hey, everyone! I want to change this platform's name to Y. As in, why was this made? As I was saying... That's stupid. This is stupid. You're stupid. This website is stupid. Hey, Globeheads! If the Earth is round, how do people in Australia not fall off? That's not how gravity works. Oh, so you think Australians have glue on their feet to keep them on the planet, huh? That's a straw man fallacy, you bozo! Enough! I'm going to unplug these servers! And nothing of value was lost. Anyway, if you want to try out Hofstetter yourself, a link to it is in the description. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time!